What did JC call his wife before they were married? Fiance. <laughs> Welcome to Shave and Butcher. I guess that joke is both really bad and inaccurate because they've went separate, they've gone separate ways, haven't they? Okay, anyway, too much, too much explaining. I've been trying this brush out for a while and I've come to terms with it. I thought it was a bit rigid at first, but I think either it's less rigid or I've understood it. It's really nice. This is Frank Shaving Synthetic Critical Handle, about 27 millimeters, and I really, I really enjoy it. It's soft, but it's got a huge backbone that it does play very nicely. So approved of this in the latest video. So I'm trying the other one out that I'm, I am trying out. Frank Shaving sent a, a bunch of brushes to, uh, is this sliding? Um, the technology in this studio is phenomenal. Sent a bunch of brushes to try out to uh, the Facebook group Wet Shavers United. So Zani, who's in charge of that, has been spreading these out. This is a Badger knot, Badger brush. It's it's wet. It's been soaking. I I don't have a caliper, so I I just have a. Uh, Tape measure, but made of wood. I don't know what that was. That was that measuring stick, foldable, <laughs> two meters, tumstock, in Swedish, and it's a twenty-ish millimeters at the base. So I, I'm thinking, is this is this floppy? Uh, but it turns out is it is not. That's the front it says FS, Frank Strombo. No, Frank Shaving. Uh, it isn't, because I've been playing around with this today, sort of cleaning it out and, and testing it a bit um, in case it requires any breaking in. So I beat this up pretty badly by hand lathering, splaying, really torturing it, drying it all the way in like this, which you shouldn't do with badger brushes, but I do anyway, so I wanted to try that out. Put a conditioner in, rinsed, uh, just shaved my head, went really well. So. So a cool little brush. So first attempt at face lathering and face shaving will happen now. Uh, I haven't measured the, the height, but you can, yeah. I haven't measured the height on this one either. So this is about 27 millimeters, this one, and this is 22. So there you go, and different not, not shapes, etc. So we'll talk about that and um, I want to talk about the soap as well. This is number one from Singari Man. Right now, it is the best smelling soap that I that I have that I own. I got sent this from Jack at the virtual groom room. We sort of swapped uh, soaps. He got a uh, one from Laugar. This is incredible. It really is a, a phenomenal um, soap. And it's from Singariman, so it's really good. Is it the Sego base? Is it the Sego base? Does it say? I don't know what base it is. I don't keep track very much. I didn't check the uh, the scent notes, so um, and I, I am not all that good in picking those up. But let's Google Singariman. Number one uh, scent notes. Okay, maybe I put in too much. Let's see what, what it says. Slick boys. There you go. Um, ah, crap. Crap, crap. There you go. Number one. But just to see what, what they put. Top notes Turkish rose vanilla. Heart notes. Oud, Bulgarian rose, and base note sandalwood, patchouli, amber. So a, a bit of wood, a bit of oud, um, and then flowery stuff. So it's it's flowery and it's but it's and it's it's not a dark it's not a dark scent, but it has a seriousness about it. No, not serious. It's it's an adult soap. It's just not lime. 
Oh, lime, great. Like some people only want lime. You know what I mean. I'm joking. They want good limes as well. But you know, none of the weird dark stuff I typically like, like dirt scents and stuff like that. It's just phenomenal, really phenomenal. So right now, the nicest scent in the soap that I own. This changes over time. Uh, the razor is a Feather Artist Club DX, the fancy version. And in there is a super professional blade, second or third use. Last time I used this was on camera with you guys. I think I bled a bit, I typically do with first time, first few times with the Chivette blade. So let's get cracking. Uh, God. Very good. So this has been soaking and I did use it on my head, but I'm, I'm pouring a bit of warm water on it because I like when it's you know, not too cold. So bowl, bowl uh, not bowl lathering, puck lathering works very well. Uh, it has, a, it has a, just the right resistance. It's like, a sp it's, it's like it has a spring. So it doesn't have backbone because it's, there's shitloads of hairs and they're packed really densely because that's sort of, I don't know what I'm talking about, but that, I, I, I feel that's sort of one kind of, one kind of, of backbone. This is just, it's like someone put a spring in the middle. So it's from technique that it's, uh, I'm, I'm babbling now. I, I apologize, I'll be, I'm not gonna say I'll be quiet, but I'll stop talking about stuff I don't know anything about. So when you put this on the face, it is just so phenomenal. Um, Singerman has an essence, or might, might be called something else, but a sort of a perfume, which, uh, which is quite strong, according to Heather, and, and a good match. Um, which I, I don't have, but I, 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 you know, that's going to be a good one. If you like the scent of the soap and, and the perfume is similar, it's going to be good. Okay, so severely overloaded, as one should, otherwise it's no fun. There are, you know, some the good excesses in life should be should be uh, uh, what's the word should be encouraged bad excesses are bad but soap hmm soap is it okay to use too much soap in a society where we use too much of everything the answer is yes at least if it's an artisan soap, right? There was a, a post in one of the Facebook groups, actually by Francisco Crivari, who, who uh, watches this channel, where, you know, it was a, it was a joke. Uh, it was quite funny, actually. And um, there was an image and stuff like that. But he, he was sort of alluding to the fact that YouTubers typically rave about brands like this and, and you know, um, in the artisans in the limelight, etc. And, and focus much less on traditional soaps, such as, um, you know, Haslinger, Raven using Mitchell's Wool Fat to pack. And, you know, and then, <laughs> At the bottom of the sea, as, as a corpse was Sapone Fischio Varesino. And, you know, that's fine. I mean, I, I, I don't use a lot of super new soaps. I do when people send it to send them to me, but they're typically American. They cost a fortune. I'm going to be not, I'm not going to be first with it anyway. And it's, that's not what I'm trying to do on the channel. I, I, if, if 
I lived in the US, I would use a lot more new soaps. I, I would sometimes try to be early, you know. So, uh, but it, if you're in Europe, it's both expensive and takes such a long time to ship. So it's kind of hard. And to the defense of YouTubers, um, A, uh, most of them are in, in North America, where it's not all that, you know, straightforward to buy European soaps, because all those soaps are European. It's expensive as well, just like American and Canadian soaps are expensive to get over in Europe. And if you have a YouTube channel, most people, even if, even if like me, you're not trying to be first with the, the, the new stuff. And in my case, it's mainly because I, I can't. <laughs> Otherwise, I, I didn't want it to. Um, but, you know, novelty and trying the new stuff out, discussing and showing what, what, what goes on in the community and that sort of thing. Those are things that YouTubers want to do. And, and that's very much what YouTubers are appreciated for. If most YouTubers would use soaps that have been around for a long time and use just, or mainly the classics, that's pair number six. I've lost five so far. Mind you, I've been beating this stuff up on purpose, really, really harshly. To test it. So YouTubers are, uh, you know, everyone has a different place in the in the value chain, sort of. And I think it's pretty pretty obvious that most YouTubers will use new soap makers who make new sense. Um, they will not generally, and should, in my opinion, not generally um, describe these new artisan soaps as always a lot better than traditional sort of European soaps. But sometimes they are. And, you know, it's quite natural to, to get excited about new stuff. And I think the, the main reason why people buy so many new soaps is scents, you know, because scents, especially in North America, a lot of focus is put on scents, and that's a big part of the of the fun. Okay, there are no new new soap bases all the time, which is fun for some people. But mostly, you know, we buy several soaps of the of the same new soap base, and that's for the scent. So. If you're shaving with Hasslinge or uh, Mitchell's Full Fat, the, the scent is not the thing. It barely is any scent and tobacco is tobacco has a strong scent. Some people like it, some people don't. It is what it is. If you shave with it regularly, it's not a lot to talk about. Saponificio Varicino, on the other hand, I only have one and that is, yeah, that's a close second after this one in terms of scent. But anyway, Francesco's making a very good joke, but it did instill a, a good discussion where the YouTubers didn't go into a defensive mode or anything, which was quite nice to see. It's more like, yeah, we, we like a lot of soaps, but obviously we try out new things more than shave with the stuff you've seen us shave with 15 times. Right? And I think most YouTubers who rave about new soaps and new soap bases, if they've tried traditional European soaps, they like those as well. Most people actually do. But it was a good post, Francisco, if you're watching. It's interesting. I've made the same observations quite a few times. Um, in the sense, yeah, very similar actually. 
I, I talked to CDB a bit about that too. Um, why don't why don't American YouTubers use more European soaps? When it's you know, it's, like I said before, it's expensive. Takes time to get them. Customs, they get lost in shipping. This is all kinds of reasons. So pretty obvious that North Americans try North American products. Um, we send over the European wet shavers. We do send over a fair bit of European soaps to the North Americans. They're generally not overly impressed, but they should try them. So we keep insisting. Um, which is good, you know, a bit of exchange. Why not? So I didn't talk about it because I was rambling about other stuff, but the brush did a, a good job. This is some, not super big, but big enough, very comfortable brush very easy to shave with, um, would be great for bow lathering, no doubt, although I haven't tried that. Well, I kind of did because I lathered in my hand for 15 minutes as part of beating the brush up as much as I could. And then, as I said, I've, I've lost five hairs and I lost the six, sixth one here. That's one, one part of assessing a brush is you know, how much it sheds. You look at Chris Maiden, for example, another cat above, he's had such poor luck. Um, and I know people like, like Jack at the Virtual Groomer like to make fun of him because he, he's got a process where he washes and dries his brushes, which is quite aggressive, uh, his badgers. But the, okay, number seven, we'll follow this up. We'll, Use it again and see. I do the same way as Chris. I've never ever had a brush, had a problem with the brush shedding. I beat the, I beat them up just the way the way he does. I probably splay even more than he does. Splay as much as I can towards the towel and very vigorously whack it back and forth to dry. So he's just unlucky, that's my conclusion. But uh, I don't know what the cost is on, on this thing. Oh. See if I have an alum here. Do I? Yes, I do. I know, just never use it. I do have an alum. It's my new thing. Thank you guys for pointing out that alum is great when you're stretching the skin and you, you've got soap, residual slickness just on the alum and perfect grip. Thank you. Can't remember who said it. I think a few people did. Because I was going, going getting toilet paper and <laughs> just, just idiot. So really appreciate that. But Frank shaving, hey, huh? I have one brush since earlier, Frank shaving, which is perfectly okay. It's it's a, a friendship shaving collaboration, or a, they released it in honor of market friendship shaving. I think it's a synthetic called Macy. Very nice, quite soft. I I like it. I use it quite a bit. I use it. I've used it a lot when traveling. Uh, but then this is the first badger from Frank shaving, and. Uh, as I said, I, I really do enjoy it. It does everything a badger should do. Um, unlike some of the really big and thick badgers that I have, this one releases soap very well. At least that's my impression so far. Eh? That is, it is a common complaint with, with uh, natural hairbrushes, especially 
alum, especially badger brushes that they are lather, what, what do you call it? I lose the word that they grab onto the leather. And don't release it properly. I mean, I think there will always be more, more lather, more soap left in the brush, in a, in a natural hairbrush than in the synthetic. That's my feeling anyway. But some are just, the lather just goes straight in there um, and doesn't come out. And that's pretty annoying. To me, that's not a good brush. They're big and they're impressive and they're beautiful, but you know, they, they, they've got to be good too and fairly easy to use. So I'm really pleased with this one. So far, I'll try it again and we'll talk about it. Few small weepers today because of the sharpness of the blade. As I, as I keep saying, it's sort of shave number four on a new chevette blade where i really feel that it's good it's comfortable before but i first three shaves on a kismet blade or one of these a lot of weepers i don't mind they go away usually with cold water but it's i want to point it out So yesterday was midsummer celebrations, very peaceful in this house, owing to pandemic stuff, but also to the fact that uh, to the fact that you know I'm not 18 <laughs> anymore. <laughs> I've got a family and we're quite content. You know, I'm struggling to keep up uh, with. Uh, you know, staying up till midnight. And we had very little drinking yesterday. A little bit of schnapps. And then uh, took it really easy. It's, it's to me, midsummer and New Year's is amateur hour a bit, you know, for partying people. So this has really good residual slickness. But just like the brush released the lather, the face releases the soap fairly easy. Some soaps, some good soaps are, it's, you know, are just really hard to wash off the skin. But that's not an automatic, that doesn't automatically mean that they're better than soaps that wash off easily. If it's too easy, it's usually no good. This one is, has, has a good balance. Because you don't want an oily residual mess. When you rinse the soap off, you want the soap to be gone. At least I do. So this is Alum from 444 Portuguese. A little bit of sting there to it because there were a few weeping willows. Um, yeah, cool. The soap smells so good. It smells so good. I, I, I think I need the perfume somehow. Um, so I need the courier, guys. <laughs> I'll pay for everything. I need to smuggle it out. YouTube bots went, what? Are you encouraging crime? And now they went, what? Again, <laughs> shit. Just rinsing the brush out. Rinsing, rinsing, rinsing. You really, yeah, and another thing with those super dense brushes is that you could, because you really need to, to get all the soap out, you really do. They're, they won't release all the lather when you wash them either, which is, God, that's really annoying. Anything, that's annoying. And, and you, you put them back and you, you hear, because <laughs> there's soap left. Okay, so this, this is how I always dry any, any brush, including uh, badger brushes. You know, so I move it around and I splay it as much as I can. You're not supposed to do this. 
I just started that way before I knew it was forbidden and it's, it's gone really well. And I lost two hairs during this shave. If I keep losing hairs, I'll be annoyed and I don't know if I, if I will. Um, but the fact that you lose a few hairs in the beginning is natural because there will be hairs in there that are loose when they come from the manufacturer. That's, you know, part of the gluing, gl gluing process. So I know the light in here is really bad, but that's what it looks like, sort of dry. I really like this. This could be a favorite. This really could be, it's, it's a small little brush. And it does everything you need to. And, you know, it covers a pretty big part of your face. So even if the base is just, as I said, 20 millimeters maybe, then um, it's not a small brush. It's a pretty cool brush. I really like it. I like both of these, but the, the Badger is my favorite. I'll do one more shave on camera with this one before we conclude, but I like both of them. But And this was fine. It looks really cool. Not my favorite synthetic brush. I think it's a bit dumb that it looks like a, a Badger brush, you know, because you get confused until you sort out that it's synthetic. But this one, wow. Wonder if this one is cheap. I'll see if I can find out if it's even on the market. But if, if this isn't too expensive, this could be a really good option if you want to try a badger. We'll see. Okay, I've got to rinse the alum off. I feel it stinging a bit. Some people don't rinse the alum off. I think there's no there's no right or wrong. I, I didn't used to until Jill at uh, Jill Will Shave. God bless her, uh, taught me that you sh really should. Here you go. Here you go, Uppsala, which is citrus and sandalwood. There is an original too, which I can't remember what the scent notes are quite, but it's, it's nice too. It's nice too. I put way too much on there. Uh, I didn't dry my face, did I? That's why, okay. So in a while, when that dries up, I'll put a bit of Oco, almost no scent. Same as the splash that Frank and I sometimes use, which is uh, pure evil. This, uh, this is just a moisturizer. Ah, I like to put them on, why not? So you saw what I used. It was cool, cool brush. Uh, thanks for uh, watching for a good 28 minutes. Um, appreciate it. You have a good remainder of the weekend or week whenever you're watching this. I'll see you soon. Meanwhile, stay sharp.